Hey guys, it's Ison here. I'm here with another Better Than Wolves Let's Play with a special guest. Where the hell are you? Hello! <laughs> I can't see you either. Oh, okay. I guess magical server lag jazz. But oh. Hopefully we didn't uh, HC spawn in completely different locations oh, here. Oh, there you are. Aha! So I immediately see this and you know me. Wait, and... wait, wait, wait. Face me for a second. Okay, allow me to just... Moon you briefly. Excellent, excellent. Excellent. I, I actually intended to uh, modify my textures to go pantless for this one, but uh, it totally slipped my mind. Ah, okay. We'll, we'll forgive <laughs> you for it. We'll forgive you All for right. it. But uh, I immediately am pretty sure that at some point I'm going to fall in here. Well, let's let's not go there then. Good call, good call. But uh, let's, I, let's I do punch like some that wood. It lets, oh, good call. <laughs> I get distracted way too easily, but uh, I do like that that shows off the hardcore stratification. Just the ravines <laughs> look so nice now. I love. Oh, them. I know, man. I, the first time I, uh, when I first implemented that code, um, I think what immediately sold me on it was I went into the basement of my base, you know, peered peered down an underground ravine and saw the strata, and immediately had the. Um, uh, the desire to just turn back around and go outside. <laughs> <laughs> it's terrifying, it really is. No, I know, it, it adds to the intimidation. Like, I, I, when I first implemented it, it was kind of experimental in terms of, like, ah, uh, I'm not sure if this is worth it, should I be modifying uh, world gen like this, all that. And that experience of, like, staring down the ravine and um, getting that sense of dread was like I was immediately sold. I'm like, okay, this has to go in the game. Like this is way too cool, you know? I I have to say I'm I've been really glad you've said screw it. Let's just modify world gen cuz what well, that's opened have... up for you has been really fun. Yeah, I'm I'm extremely um conservative about when I do it. Like I'm trying not to overdo it. I as you know, I hate messing with people's worlds. It's just right. Like, you know, kind of been one of my guiding principles since I started working on Better Than Wolves was like, okay, just don't fuck with world gen. Like, make use of what's what's there. You know, like, you see so many mods that just overdo it and end up with a ton of excessive wars and, like, just all kinds of completely unnecessary crap, right? Mm -hmm. um, which I find only waters down the game experience, you know? And really, when, when you look at it, like Minecraft, geez, since I started this a couple of years ago, it has always had a problem where... Um, there's just not enough uses for the stuff that's in the game. Right. You know, right. Uh, there are so many underutilized resources, and that still includes the ores. Like, I'm not fully satisfied with, say, the number of uses available for gold and lapis. You know, like, these are really cool diamond-level resources, you know, that you come across and you want to say, oh, wow, you know, I found this, right? And it gives mm -hmm. you that kind of little bit of candy, you know, as you're exploring, or potentially could. Um, oh, it's starting to rain. Yep, of course. <laughs> oh, and I momentarily stopped punching because of that. How, how many planks you got, by the way? I'm up to nine, about to be ten. Yeah, I got nine as well, and I believe all we need is 18, right? Something like that. I haven't actually remembered all the numbers yet. <laughs> I think it's 18 or 20. Oh, I have 11, apparently. I'd missed one. If I remember right, there's that, like, little gotcha where you need a couple of extra sticks <laughs> to, right. to I'm make your... i toss you my planks and continue on here. Doo -doo -doo. Am I hearing a skeleton? I hope not, because I'll die. Hmm. No, don't die. Yeah, with hardcore spawn, that would make for an interesting <laughs> re le rest of the let's play. Yeah, exactly. Well, as I discussed on, uh, or as I mentioned on the forums today, I'm already, like... Ooh, that rain is loud. Uh, trying to consider, or I'm considering a system whereby, like, you'll be able to set teams, and it'll take you to the same spawn location. Right, I was reading um, about that. That looks... I feel like that'll help a lot of people get over that hurdle of actually enabling hardcore spawn. Okay, I'm making a workbench, so don't okay. don't make another one. Sounds good. Okay, plopping it down next to you there. I have, uh... Not put any of my input. I'll be able to make some sh uh, shafts here, but I don't have any more wood. So there you go. Have my shafts, good sir. Uh, okay, I'm gonna do the um, the pick thing. So okay, there's really no need for you to trouble yourself with that. <laughs> Sounds good. Like I, I, as you know, I play mainly single player, so I haven't weighed in on that. Yeah, I mean, me watching too. Watching people playing multiplayer, I feel like that might help people get over the hurdle of actually enabling hardcore spawn. Because, I mean, I didn't, well, yeah. I didn't enable Hardcore Spawn in my single-player world until my second season. 
Mm -hmm. And I have to say, it made the game significantly more fun. Like oh, I it is. It is. And, and frankly, a part of me dies every time I see a new player say, oh, you know, I'm just going to turn it off. I don't like it, yada, yada. Right. Because it, it so benefits the overall gameplay experience. You know, like, without, without consequence, and this is true of any game, but without consequence to death, um, there's no point. You know, like, there's no sense of danger at any point in the game. Exactly. You know? Um, like, I was watching this video uh, last week, or a few days ago, um, you know, where these these players first encountered the beast, right? Right. And, you know, there's the initial freak out over the growls and everything else. Um, but ultimately, like, once that 10 seconds was over, they kind of reverted back to this clinical tone, like... The way I put it was that they could have been discussing accounting, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, because, okay, yes, we have, like, this super dangerous creature that's growling and is really nasty and visually threatening, but since there is no consequence to us dying, uh, well, it's ultimately meaningless, right? Exactly. Um, and we're not actually afraid of it. We just had a moment where we thought we should be. <laughs> exactly, know? exactly. So, you know, it, it was interesting because, like, I don't know if you were following um, the discussions that were happening several months ago, but, you know, I was getting a lot of people bitching about, um, you know, oh, what's the point of hardcore beds, and what's the point of hardcore spawn, and, um, you know, it's like, well, the game isn't difficult enough to, to warrant, like, not being able to skip the night, and on one level, like, they were entirely correct, right? Mm-hmm. But my response at that point was, well, wait, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm working on it. And exactly. <laughs> it was really a case where if I didn't establish that baseline behavior of like, okay, there has to be some kind of meaning to death, you know, like just as the bare minimum to um, there being any challenge in the game. It's like you can make the game, it's kind of like what Dinnerbone is doing right now, he's... You know, he's making all kinds of adjustments to, like, you know, zombies mysteriously being able to summon other zombies and all all this kind of artificial difficulty increase. Um, but there's still the underlying problem of, well, okay, say zombies are really tough and they kill you. And, okay, well, what does that mean if you just spawn, you know, 16 blocks away where you set up your bed? Exactly. You know, which you were able to make in the first five minutes of the game because, you know, it's like, well, as I've referred to it, it's like the three wood and three wool of invincibility, right? Mm -hmm. It's like as soon as you have that thing, there can be no difficulty in the game. <laughs> you know? Exactly. It's... Like on the summoning of zombies, I was watching a video. Someone had made a proof of concept of a mob trap that utilized the zombie sum uh, summoning to basically just get infinite zombie flesh. It's like, oh, right. you know, what should have made the game harder because of beds, essentially. Right. Just provided more resources. Yeah. No, exactly. It's, um, yeah, I, I've, i you know, like, I totally idolize Notch as a designer and, uh, you know, what he did on Minecraft, but I've never understood beds. You know, um, I, I was playing Minecraft before those got included, and... You know, I pulled a, a WTF moment when those were released. Right. Um, and I just never quite understood it. And I guess I was waiting for a balance pass on them that never came. And if anything, they just got easier, right? It was because at the beginning, at least you had to build some kind of structure around your bed. Exactly. And now it's just jump in before you see the monsters and you're okay. Yeah, exactly. You're like, put them down in the middle of an open field with zombies all around and it's all good, you know? <laughs> it's like, skip the night. And not only is it like the the three wood and three wool of invincibility, it's like the three wood and three wool of, like, wipe out every monster on the surface of the planet. Exactly. You know, like, it's basically, um, it's basically a, a whole combination of cheat codes wrapped up into one of the cheapest Minecraft recipes around, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so how close were we to having better than beds instead of better than wolves? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you want to come over to my hidey hole, man? Yeah, what sure. Oh, wow, it's we're, getting kind yeah, of dark. Yeah, it's getting dark, and we're yakking so much that... Uh, yep. How are you on resources right now? I have now? 20 wood. 
and okay, cool. And whatever I yeah, gave I've you. got I've got a stone axe, a bunch of. Uh... Okay, let's get down here. Can't hope that chicken survives the night. Um. Uh, I dirt dirt. Okay. I'm gonna try to get by you and wall this over here. Uh, nothing can get in there. Okay. Yeah, we should be good. So. Uh, okay, I gotta place this workbench. Now we're alone at the bottom of a little tunnel. It's nighttime. Whoa, could so cozy. We are, uh, I, I swear that someone has coded it in, so anytime I start in a world, it's always in a uh, snow biome. Because okay. I, I can't remember the last time I didn't spawn in a snow biome. <laughs> so. Yeah, it's been a while for me, too. Hmm. Well, I don't think I've changed anything in the code that would do that. <laughs> If player is icy New Year, snow screw him. Excellent. No, Excellent. I, I was just thinking because I've I've been spawning in snow biomes an awful lot too. So, you know, I was wondering if I could have possibly done. I, I'm paranoid about stuff like that. Man. <laughs> it's like every time something seems statistically improbable, I'm asking myself as to whether I could have screwed something up did in I, the code that did, did I do it. This? You know? Yeah. I have to say, I'm always always been impressed with how quickly you fix bugs. That's something that's blown my oh, mind as someone man, I, who, you know doesn't make money from their mod it's i i just genuinely feel bad I, I i guess it's just like my sense of professionalism left over from my time in the industry it, it's it, you know like bugs generally drive me nuts right like there there have been several occasions three where from you if i can uh sorry uh can i steal three cobble from you yeah i'll start there helping uh just in the little hole there excellent but you were saying, oh, ah! God, here it comes. I, I have to tell you, I almost shit my pants the first time I heard that. <laughs> Straight up. I, like, it was when I was doing one of my one shots. I was in a cave, I think, and I started right. hearing that, and I just, nope, nope. <laughs> I know, it's nerve-wracking. Eh? Oh, yeah. I, I've, I've had it happen once where, and, like, I know how all this stuff works, right? So it's it's pretty hard for me to unnerve myself. <laughs> But I did have it happen uh, a little while ago where I was playing, um, doing an early game playthrough. Like, basically with each of the hardcore changes I've been making to the early game, mm -hmm. like, I start up a fresh world and, you know, play it myself rather extensively to right, right. make sure, you know, my theory, my theories on gameplay actually work in practice. Because <laughs> you know? it's, man, well, you've seen how some of the really subtle changes I've made can have such a, a huge impact on the gameplay experience. Right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, you know, that could be a double-edged sword, too, where, you know, you make a change that sounds great on paper, and in practice, it just sucks, <laughs> you know? Exactly. And, like, experience gets around a certain amount of that, but every once in a while, like, you just totally screw the pooch. And... Nothing, <laughs> nothing really can uh, replace just sitting down and playing it seeing how it feels oh yeah exactly and and i think as fans of the mod know like i i just play the shit out of my own mod you know like, yeah yeah i always play you know default options with just better than wolves installed i never run any other mods you know like this is basically you know when it comes to minecraft all that i play mm -hmm. yeah i um, don't think i've touched anything it's gotten to the point I don't consider myself playing Minecraft anymore. I play better than Wolves. Yeah, it, it, honestly, it feels really good when I hear people say stuff like that. I, you know, like, I, um, I I, think I'm the kind of personality that I tend to respond more to the negative comments I get out of people than the positive ones, you know, it's and just with, like... With how many comments, it's hard not to. I can understand that. Yeah, and I remember I, I saw something from... Um, this guy that did web cartoons a while ago and shit, I wish, I wish I remember who it was because it was so true. And he was talking about like, he did up a cartoon that was basically addressing how, you know, he could read a hundred comments of glowing praise for what he did and then feel like complete shit because like one troll, you know, decided to diss his work. Right. You know? Right. And it's really amazing when you're in the public eye, you know, to any degree, like it, it's not, I'm not that big in the public eye with better than wolves, but still it's, it's really amazing dealing with communities directly like that. Just how hard it is to get away, um, 
from the psychological impact of you know people slamming your work yeah i could understand that i mean you know not the same audience as you do but on my youtube one mm -hmm. majorly negative comment definitely does impact me a heck of a lot more than all the normal praise so i yeah and and it's weird and i i guess it just comes down to like in our day-to-day -day life you know where we're used to dealing with people mostly one-on-one -on -one, you know we're used to you know listening and taking heed of what people say about our work right right but the thing is when you extend that onto the internet which is like the internet is probably one of the most unnatural um environments for human beings <laughs> you know it's mm -hmm. like we're not used to this socially right like suddenly being exposed to the opinions of thousands and tens of thousands of people um who can speak you know, in and complete when, anonymity <laughs> yeah yeah exactly so you know they feel entitled to act like complete douchebags yeah um it's it's amazing how how much that can actually impact you even you know for a guy like me like i'm probably one of the most thick-skinned people out there in in the minecraft world <laughs> yeah and, i don't think you'd still be here if you weren't <laughs> well no exactly it's like you know modders have come and gone you know left and right over over the past couple of years that i've been doing this you know and i've taken a hell of a lot of fac flack for how i interact with people and uh, you know how blunt i am at times and how downright insulting i can be but right. i think in a lot of ways that has been basically my survival mechanism <laughs> you know yeah and understandably so i mean there was that guy that modder who did um easy diamonds and he just kind of disappeared off the scene immediately <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah, I still have a blast posting on that thread. Uh, and it's every like, time you post, I get like five or six emails like, someone commented, and I'm like, oh, just let it die. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I won't let that one die. No. It's like, it's too amusing to see how each week somebody manages to take us seriously. Yep, you know? yep, it's pretty mind-blowing. <laughs> uh. I, I, guess, I guess I get you know a, a little bit of revenge on people for like all the flack that i've put up with you right know, through stuff like that you know i get a, a chuckle every once in a while out of out of uh doing a little bit of reverse trolling there's been a couple of <laughs> nights where i've been kind of surprised we didn't get temp bans <laughs> yeah yeah I, I hear that man but i think the moderators must must be aware like they're probably getting a laugh out of it too, probably you know? yeah i mean because, the because thread there wouldn't so be many... there if they didn't <laughs> yeah like there are so many like that was a perfect parody kind of of the whole minecraft scene because there mm -hmm. are so many mods out there that are basically easy diamonds in another package yeah you know? essentially yeah okay let there be light oh my god what is I, uh, what's this normally I, I do this right away um when when i'm playing through the early game but because we're chatting about all kinds of stuff i'm getting distracted yeah. <laughs> and don't know what the fuck i'm doing am i allowed to say fuck on your channel oh fuck around i don't care okay <laughs> you need food by the way um i have four nuggets down so i'm doing okay, all right I, and no food um i don't have any food on me now okay here sawdust. Have, a, have a pork chop Ooh. sawdust is not edible oh <laughs> i do have to say like sawdust um dropping from trees was such a simple thing that has changed early game for me like it bark and salt us because i mean i had so many issues burning wood to the point i would just avoid it and honestly still use coal but having right. that you know replacement that at this point all that's as good for is burning i'm just like oh okay and it just felt right i love i love it cool yeah it when i first released it uh, released it it was on un unfortunately a little bit overpowered mm -hmm. oh another part drop for you there at the bottom Ooh. of the stairs you're so good to me i got like at the end of the day, I managed to get two chops and two pieces of beef, so... Yeah, I'll I just got to zoomed and... out and did a bunch of trees, so... <laughs> okay, uh, so we got to start planning tools for tomorrow. I have three axes and a shovel, and I have another 27 cobble. Yeah, I got two picks, a shovel, and uh, about a third of an axe left. 